Oh no, no, I think, I think, I think. Because otherwise people will be like, this is annoying. Why have we got to wait so long? Ah, yeah, awesome. All right, now that it's shared on Breakthrough uh, Center's webpage, um, I mean the um, Facebook page, now it's legit. So welcome to the Daily Dose of God's Word. Uh, today's Thursday. This is day 11 of 14 along the subject of prayer and fasting. And I felt like we, we got the breakthrough. We got a breakthrough on day nine or eight and then a few more things fell into place and it's been a great time. Um, so look, what I want to read from today is the book of Nehemiah. Have a look at this. This is great. Book of Nehemiah is fantastic, you know. They came, Nehemiah got this really bad news. He, they said to him in verse 3, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. He received this terrible news. We know that it was terrible to him because it says in the next verse, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. So this is not news that he wanted to hear. You know, he would have preferred it be, well, actually, those people, the survivors are doing great. They're, the walls are rebuilt. They're, you know, Jerusalem's going awesome. It wasn't the case at all. What came to his ears was cause for him to weep and to mourn for many days. But I love, I love that he didn't just stay in the, in the morning weeping, but he turned his weeping into prayer. You know, some say that every, every tear is a silent prayer. Prayer is not silent. Prayer is audible uh, communication. It, it's, you, you actually need to do something. Prayer is communication between you and God. I, I think many times we'll, sell ourselves short if we're just, well, God can hear me, God can hear me, and never actually speak to him. You know, so it's more than just thoughts and prayers, hashtag um, prayer hands emoji. It's actually like I'm communicating with you. I think that we, we should commune and have a desire to commune with the Lord in prayer. And that's what Nehemiah did when he got this bad news. He mourned, he wept. Sure, there's emotions, that's fine. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. That's what we need to do. When the, if the bad news comes to us and the challenge, when challenges come to us, we need to turn it into prayer. And it says, I prayed, it goes on, we'll, we'll just move ahead to um, the next chapter because Nehemiah, was the king's cupbearer, it goes on to say later. But I, I really want to hit this thing. Hey, Ivan, Chris, good to see you, even though you're about a little like I'm that big. Verse 4, chapter Nehemiah 2, verse 4 says, Then the king said to me, What do you request? Because the king basically said, um, he said, like, why are you sad? I'll read that to you too. It says, therefore, the king said to me, why is your face sad? Since you are not sick, this is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid. This is Nehemiah being afraid to be sad in the king's presence. And, and said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city and the place of my father's tombs lies in waste and its gates are burned with fire? Hey, Douglas. <laughs> And then the king said to me, what do you request? See, I love that it's not just whinging as well. He didn't just complain. Why are you sad? Oh, because of this problem. Uh, and it was just a verbal diarrhea onslaught of all of the things that have been getting Nehemiah down for the past however long. But because Nehemiah went to the Lord and prayed and took the burdening process upon himself. Like there's a supernatural burdening that starts to happen when the Lord wants you to do something about something. And that Nehemiah was getting loaded up with 
with prayer, with power, with fasting. And he, he was ready. So when he spoke to the king, his words weren't just complaint without the ability to do anything about it or without the heartfelt desire and the he's he'd already gone through a process of having the desire to really do something about it. And the king said to me, what do you request? I love that the king said that to him. He didn't have to say that to the king. The king said that to him. What do you request? I mean, a lot of times we could just already put in our application for leave and say, hey, we want to do this. We want to do that. We want to do this. But the king brought it up. Why? Probably because he's praying and fasting already. And it's beginning to happen. It says, then the king said to me, what do you request? And then it says, so I prayed to the God of heaven. Hang on, Nehemiah. I thought you were talking to the king. It says, then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king. I love that. So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. And if you keep reading, it turns out pretty good. But I love this verse 4. Then the king said to me, so what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, speaking to God about men before you're speaking to men about God. I like that, that we should be speaking to God in prayer about situations, about burdens, about things that might make us want to cry and mourn, rather than speaking to people about this and just having it be complaint. Doesn't mean that we can never be sad. Doesn't mean we, we, we can't cry and mourn, but it does mean that I'm going to need extra charging for my phone shortly because it's it's going flat so we'll keep this broadcast brief but i love that and i want to encourage you don't just speak to men about god speak to god about men and may the favor of god come on your life you know there's no way that nehemiah could have done what he was called to do if the good hand of god was not upon him he would have just come into the king's presence been sad and then his head would have been removed from his shoulders because that's why he was afraid. You weren't meant to come into the king's presence all sad and depressed. You were meant to be on your top game, meant to be happy, be, be a joyful cupbearer now. Remember what happened to the last guy? He was sad, didn't go well. Load up in prayer. Speak to God about men before you speak to men about God. Do both, but definitely always bring things up with the Lord. Uh, it's so good for us to do that. And as we do that, doors open unto themselves. Doors open of their own accord. That's why you even see it in the first part of verse 4. The door's already beginning to open to Nehemiah because he's just describing what the problem is. And the king's saying, what do you request? He's saying, hey, listen, I, I want to help you. Many times when we speak to God about men and about situations, then the Lord will move on our behalf and move on their hearts to cause them to go, you know what, I want to help you with this. So may you get the help that you need from heaven through people in Jesus' name. Wonderful. Love you all. I will finish the broadcast neatly before my phone completely runs out of battery. If you're anywhere in the Toowoomba area, and you're looking for the ch for a church, I'd love you to, to meet you in person. Love to see you um, at Breakthrough Center. It's in Wilsonton, 15 Blake Street, 10 a.m. Sundays. I believe it's a good church. I'll come. I'll be here. Uh, I can vouch for it. Good church in Toowoomba. Oh, yes. And uh, also, if you'd like to give, we'll put a link to Breakthrough Center website in the comments. And you can follow the links there and give. Uh, or if you want any more information, just have a look at, at the website there. That'd be awesome. Love you all. See you tomorrow at around the same time, 5.30. All right. God bless.